people at home, it's 9 p.m. And whenever you see me on your screen, definitely you know it's time for the Men's Lounge. The show you always wait for every Thursday to discuss most of the pertinent issues that we face in our society. Um, let me just remind you, we are still in our health month. And today we are going to discuss one particular topic that's very, very, very important. And it has to do with alcohol abuse. Um, when I'm back after my first break, I would introduce... Uh, my guest who happens to be um, a known doctor, his name is Chris Jemphy. Um, uh, he will tell you more about himself before we proceed. However, before we go on, I have some LPM, some something to tell you. So just to climax our uh, health and sanitation month uh, in a very grand style, we have a surprise. So what we intend to do is that we want to give away prizes to 30 lucky funds. Yes, you heard me right. 30 people. Okay. So this is what you have to do to be part of it, to be able to win. This is what you have to do. Locate a 24 by 24 feet area in or around your house. All right. Now take a picture of it, how it looks before. What you are going to do is that you are going to clean it up. All right. So it's a clean up with GMABC. All right. That's the hashtag we have. So you're going to clean that area up. So you take the, the first thing is that you look at the area within your compound or wherever Take a photo of it. Now, clean it up after. Okay? And then when you are done, you take another photo of it. Now, what you need to do is that post these pictures on your social media handle. And then you tag us. So, when you are tagging, you hashtag clean up with GMABC. And then you also hashtag GMABC Health Month to become one of our lucky winners. There are sponsors to this. It's being sponsored by DSP Cleaning, Suzy Herbal Center, Dragnet, Mopes. Tovila Water Solutions, and then Purpose Pizza. Remember to clean responsibly. Wear your mask and adhere to all the COVID-19 safety protocols. So on this note, I'm going to take my first break. When I'm back, we go straight into our discussions. Please stay tuned. All right, so welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are in the Men's Lounge on ETV Ghana. And so just before I went for the break, I did mention that today we are going to discuss alcohol abuse. And there's been some research on what alcohol abuse is and how much is too much and all that. Today with us, we are going to have a discussion with um, a very qualified person in that regard. However, before we proceed, I want to urge you all to be part of this show on all our social media handles at ETV Ghana. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all the other ones at ETV Ghana. Also feel free to join us on our WhatsApp um, platform, which is 020-222-054. Send us your comments and then we'll do justice by asking the doctor your questions and then also reading to the public what your thoughts and your comments are. Chris. Hello. Hello. Akwaba. Hello. All right. So the guest today I have is Chris Jemphy. He's uh, should I perhaps leave him to tell you a little bit about himself before we go on? Chris, let's hear you. Okay, I'm Christian Jemphy, yeah. um, a clinical health psychologist. Mm -hmm. Also a tutor of the College of Distance Education, University of Cape Coast. A minister, and then uh, if I want to go down the list, we won't finish today. So I there's, think there's a lot more. Yeah. There's a lot so more. all Chris is trying to say is that he's <laughs> a big man, and he tells <laughs> us about the word of God. That's what he meant by minister, not parliamentary, no. But talking about something parliamentary, now, there, there's something that really bothers me, and please allow me to, to bring this out. So I've been asking myself, you know, when, when Chris, I'm sure you may have seen it yourself as well. When you travel along the uh, highways, there are some speed ramps that you can tell clearly that, uh, well, I don't know what the standards are, but they don't look like they have any standards. any standards. Some of them are just sand. Some of them are some rope with some sand, some concrete and all that. So it is causing damage to people's cars. Indeed, we understand perhaps they are speeding, but how about we find the right resource, the right materials to put up those speed stoppers and all that? Please, please, let's do something about it. People are really suffering. Drivers are losing their shocks all the time. Their brakes are... I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot. Please, let's look at it. Whichever authorities that have to look at this, kindly take a, a very good look at it. This is Edamakuma, so please allow me, let me talk about this. Chris. Hello. Akwaba. So, you know, alcohol is uh, is why it's a widely used substance, all right. 
and uh, it's been part of us i mean for so many so years many in years. our country i mean in several other countries as well sure. i mean talking about even these days of covid 19 alcohol has been proving to be one of the very good things well not by intake anyway you know it's, it's it helps clean our hands and yeah. all that but there seem to be some peculiar issue when it comes to alcohol and the fact that it's, it's there's an abuse of it by you know some people i want to believe that perhaps it, it may have been you know um, something that happens in a long time or maybe in recent time but whichever way it is it doesn't come across as something pleasant and it's 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 it needs us you and i you know talking about talking it about and so then the first thing that begs on my mind to ask is that how much is too much i believe this is what really will come up with alcohol. how much is too much what 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 does alcohol use when when does it become a problem chris okay um you know the international center for alcohol abuse and alcoholism have stated some minimum intakes you know alcohol have actually three different categories okay we have the the beer we have the wine and then the spirit so all these three they have some minimum cate um, categories that you need to take in which is looks seen as being moderate for the individuals functioning but how much is too much is also dependent on the individual in question. Mm -hmm. Okay, depending on how y your metabolism, depending on how the liver is able to ease the pressure. Okay, so somebody might take just a sip and it is too much. Somebody can take two, thin, 15 bottles and it's normal. Okay, but according to the International Center for Alcoholism and Alcohol Abuse, five bottles to eight bottles of beer it's moderate in a week. It's Hold on. moderate. Five bottles to eight bottles yeah. in a week in seven days is moderate. It's moderate. Okay. So even one bottle in a day is already beginning to look like it's too much. A whole bottle in a day. Okay, maybe you are talking about a small bottle, not a big yes. one. <laughs> uh, the big bottle. Uh. So according to them, that's what they, and then um, they call it ons. So eight to twelve, five, eight to twelve ons of beer mm. in a week. It's enough for the body to function okay but that is also dependent on an individual's liver the okay. pressure the on pressure. the liver mm -hmm. and how the person can uh, the metabolism system how he can take the alcohol out of the system immediately mm. yeah mm. and so when does it become a problem um alcohol intake become a problem when it tends to interfere with your daily activities when it tends to have effect on the individual mm. okay you know it gets to a point some people will take alcohol to the extent that they ignore most important things about their life. They are always thinking about alcohol. You see them in the, uh, under the seat of their cars, in their offices, everywhere is alcohol. On their shelf, in their room, and they ignore all the most important things about their lives and tend to enjoy where they will find alcohol. That's why you could see young guys driving all the way from parties to parties, from club to clubs, and just alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. And it's all because of alcohol. Yeah. Mm. This alcohol must be must be powerful. Though. It doesn't take us to church. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing I'd like to know is: so, if somebody takes some alcohol every day, you know, some some limit or level of alcohol every day, does the the, the, the does it mean the person is an alcoholic? No, it doesn't. No, you you are not an alcoholic because you know the level you have. Mm -hmm. Is it? What we are looking at here is the quantity the person takes. Okay. And then how often and how it interferes with the person's functioning. So if the person takes, let's say, uh, a glass of wine a day, I think that glass of wine wouldn't be so much enough to really interfere with the person's daily activities. Unlike somebody who would take like a full bottle or a full bottle of whiskey. I hope you get it. So the quantity and then the, the type of alcohol is also very important. Yes. So taking alcohol in a day or the use of alcohol in a day is not really a problem, but the quantity mm. and how often it is used. Doc, I mean, from where you sit, I know you have access to several researches. I have read a little bit and I'm sure. aware that in Ghana, about 23.3% of, of Ghanaians take alcohol. And two point about two point one percent or two point three percent. I need to check Jeff, yeah. but I think it's about two point one percent are heavy drinkers. Sure. Does that suggest to you? Because for me, the, from where you sit, these are the kind of issues that come to you really. 
And so does it suggest to you that alcoholism or alcohol abuse is a problem in Ghana? It's a big problem. Is Globally, um, alcoholism is a major public health issue. Like, mm. it poses a lot of threat to the health of the individual because it have both a, sh a short and a long-term effect on the person, okay? And we can take Ghana out of the global statistics. Mm. And, you know, this alcohol can lead to some of physical effects that is endangering themselves. And most of these young ones are engaging in so many things mm. that you will be surprised to. I don't know if you saw the video of a young guy who had prepism. Um, not sure, not sure. Was yeah. it on social media? It was on social well, media. I may not have he, seen it. He, he was taking those alcohol drugs, uh, alcohol um, that have a lot of aphrodisiac. And oh. unfortunately, mm. it, it tends to something else. So, boom. Mm. And his uh, manhood wouldn't settle. So most of them engage in this behavior is, um, just for the pleasure they, f they, f they find or yeah, they get out of yeah. it. And it has become a lot of problem. Most of these road accidents on some weekends, most of them are as a result of the drivers engaging in some mm. um, alcoholic mm. um, issues. So it is a major problem, both to the health sector and even to the, um, the police as in getting people who engage in certain um, immoral But doctor, it, it is indeed a problem. But you are the same doctors who are telling us that some little alcohol is good for the body. I'm very much aware that doctors even say that <laughs> you need to take some wine, you know, it's good for the heart, the heart. and all that. So uh, what are you then disproving this? Uh, I need to understand. Because more and more, you people say, yeah, no, kakra. It's small. <laughs> eh, doc? You know, um, God in his own wisdom, I think I was, I was telling this to somebody a couple of minutes ago, uh, God in his own wisdom, made our body to produce what the body needs to maintain homeostasis, okay? So most of the things we take in, the end product is glucose, the end product is alcohol. You get it. So the minimum level of alcohol the body needs to function, it's, it's, it's being produced by the body. So there's no need for an external introduction of uh, alcohol to the mm -hmm. body. And for the wine, um, some research shows that wine has um, some, something we call antioxidants that help in the, the, the cardiovascular system. So it helps the heart to actually uh, pump the blood and help to reduce some uh, cardiovascular infection like myocardiac infection and all that. Yes, but it doesn't mean that you should take more alcohol for you to be able to survive. Which hold is wrong. on, hold on. Yes. You specifically said wine, so we shouldn't drink the wine. Oh, no. And that's why I started with the amount, the quantity. Dr. Fu, we cry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so because that helps with the function of the heart, you would certify to say that wine is good for the heart? Uh, anything alcohol has a long-term effect. As I said earlier, the, the body produces its own alcohol for uh -huh. the body to function. Mm -hmm. But... What I said about the wine is that, yes, research has proven that it has what we call the antioxidants. That helps okay. the heart. Okay. But that doesn't mean that you need more wine for your heart to function. Research has also shown that some people take mild to moderate level of alcohol. That is also dependent on the individual's capacity. Capacity to take. Yes. The mild to moderate. They have less risks of cardiovascular or coronary infections. Okay. Okay. Yes. The research has proven, but how much is too much for you as an individual? Mm. So to be on the safer side, you don't engage in, you get it, you don't engage in, in a situation where you might not know how to actually res, um, restrict or regulate it. Yeah. And it might tend to a long-term problem for mm. you. I mean, I guess it's obvious to tell us that everybody has limits and it will be just right to know what your limits are so you don't exceed it. And so exceeding your limits, obviously, is the alcohol abuse, if I'm correct. What are the risk factors? Um, risk factors that lead to alcoholism yeah. or alcohol abuse. One, there's some genetic implantation, some mutations of genes that have proven that uh, some people come to the world uh, with some genes or inherit, inherit those kind of genes from their parents. That's why you can see some families like, it goes in the line. The father, okay. the uncle, the aunties, the senior brother, the, and then it's, it's, it's going like that. Mm. But it can also, we can also talk about the environmental components. The environment is also a factor because there are some environment and some culture that uses alcohol almost in every of their dealings. Mm. 
mm -hmm. okay, there's some culture or that alcohol is exposed. So when you are exposed to alcohol, like for me as, as an example, when I was a kid, my grandfather used to send me to get alcohol for him. So two shots of brandy, one shot of aperitif. Yeah, hold on, let me, I, I, I could remember this very yeah, well. Two shots of brandy, and one, one shot, shot of, of aperitif. Hmm. And when I go get it and I'm on my way back, mm -hmm. it's, it's in a bottle, like the water bottle that we have there. So I would open it a little, then I try to sip. Hmm. Then I'll close it. Then I'll put it back. You see? So with this, if I am, I am supposed to live in that environment for a long period of time, you probably get used to it. There will be a possibility I get used to it. Mm. And mm. then the craving for more, the craving for more, and the craving for more. So that talks about the environment aspect mm. or where you find yourself, the jurisdiction. I'm not trying to be a bit, uh, uh, let me say, specific about certain people. But, mm. you know, there are some areas in Ghana, when you get there, almost all the young guys. Mention them. Almost all the young guys between the ages of 13, 14 to 18 they are into alcohol, serious alcohol, something. So the environment will expose you to. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you are in a family where alcohol is everywhere, on the shelf, in the fridge. You know, as you are growing up, you'll be tempted to, okay, dad always take the, let me try it. What is it? Mm. You start taking and then. Then, at what age did you first taste alcohol? It's also another important thing. When those, research has shown that those who take alcohol at their early stages of life are more likely to grow to become our colleagues when they go because they will be tempted to go for more and for more along the line and then so those are basically some of the few rare risk factors that exposes people or lead people in engaging mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. and so then if, i mean taking from what you have said the environment really matters yeah how people were brought up and all that mm -hmm. you know in the culture that we have as Ghanaians, I, I think this even cuts across almost um, yeah, it may not be hundred percent, but almost all the you know tribes and and I mean culture settings that we have, you realize that even when the child is born, there is that part of the culture that d differentiates water from alcohol. You know, um, if I can speak the language well, um, if it is coffee, coffee in in Sony, uh, you know, I I I ask a question about why that is done, and I I was told that it is for the child. It, it is should I say, a perception that the child should be able to speak the truth so that when it is water, you say it is water. It is water. And if it is alcohol, say you say that. it is alcohol. I don't want to believe this is part of the things that exposes us to alcohol because I perhaps <laughs> think that's too early, that's too you know, early. an age to judge. But again, if somebody, like you said, starts yeah. taking the alcohol much earlier in life, let's mm -hmm. say in the times of the teens or just before the teens, mm -hmm. that is when the person is likely yeah. to be an alcoholic. Sure. But aren't there people who started much later, like even after they are teens and are still alcoholics? Yes, so I was getting to that. So some, there are some social factors as well. Mm -hmm. um, lost of job, lost of loved ones, that the person seek to use the alcohol as a means of getting over. You know, people actually, learn how to take alcohol during funerals. So they give you smoke, mm -hmm. especially you, you've, you've lost someone very new, you are crying, somebody will come, then those kind of a thing. So you, you tend to tend to the alcohol to find a comfort. Yeah. So you take it, you, you feel like at that moment, your, your cognition, your mental process has become a bit slow. So mm -hmm. you forget about the things that are happening around you for a while. So anytime it comes back, you go and take alcohol. So the social events can also trauma. And some people, when they are exposed to too much stress and they don't know how to handle, they find a way to ease the tension by going for mm -hmm. some other things. There. All right, viewers, if you're just joining us, it's the Men's Lounge. We are talking alcohol abuse, and uh, it, is, it is important to note that um, it's, it's not something that we should be proud of, but what's most important is knowing what your limits are because there are some positives also that's, you know, taking in the alcohol uh, may have but indeed doctor says that know your limits and that's the most important thing Re may i remind you that this show is also brought to you by casa preco at lomo Beaches. i'm going to go on my next break and then when we're back we can we come back to the discussion please stay tuned
All right, welcome back. If you're joining us, we are still in the men's lounge discussing alcohol abuse with Dr. Chris Jemfi. And so before we proceed, I have a message from uh, one of our viewers. And like I said earlier, keep your messages coming on our WhatsApp pages and we'll do the justice with. If it's a question, we'll ask. If it's a comment, we'll read it for everybody else to hear. So for everything, there is a negative side to it. Alcohol has been with us for ages. And if a user decides to abuse it, that's his own cup of tea. I use it only when I'm about to take lunch or supper. Imano in ho. Doc, osi obu didi. You know, yeah. Trebi and Sana, Indeed. lunch or supper. That particular thing, I've heard it in so many places. <laughs> it's, it's become like a norm at several places I've been to. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to ask you whether it is good or bad. but Because you know my answer, right? I don't know your answer. <laughs> Perhaps I should. Okay, is it good or bad? It will go back to the, to the moderation. No, no, no. This one is just to eat. You know, to eat. That Somebody's to eat. Somebody's to eat. It's like... A whole. <laughs> <laughs> so how much are you taking? How much are you taking? Yes. Okay, okay, that's very important. We still come back to the limits. Yes. And remember, we always need to drink responsibly. It's it's one of the things. That is why. Look, when you even see these bottles of 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 those drinks, look, just read everything on top of it. You are likely to see that it is eighteen plus. Eighteen plus only means that it is good for people above Perfect. eighteen. Please, it's very important. Okay, so let's drink responsibly. <laughs> Dog, back to our discussion. So. Yeah. I've been struggling to decipher alcohol abuse from alcoholism. Okay. Are they the same? No. They aren't? They aren't the same. Mm. When we talk about abuse, you abusing something, mm. misusing it. Yeah. Um, not within a prescription. Okay. So you are using something either um, excessive or a consistent use of drug. Mm. Okay. That pulls some health threats to the individual. We can call that abuse. But alcoholism, there have been now some negative effect that is coming as a result of a continuous, a long use of the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the abuse can just be a one day something. You abuse it. You, 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 you misuse the alcohol. You take in excess. Or it can be a continuous thing. You, you take more of alcohol every day. But the alcoholism comes in when problem begins. You want to stop and you can't stop. Okay. So that brings us to tolerance. So when we talk about tolerance and alcoholism, is when now your body has now adjusted. Has you know, God has created us in a way that the body functions on its own. Okay, in a way to maintain homeostasis, as I said earlier. So now you have introduced a substance to the body. The body has now learned to accommodate that substance. Mm. Okay. Mm. So it gets to a point the body now becomes tolerant to that particular substance, to the alcohol. So you need more of that alcohol to function. Okay. So previously, you take a bottle of Smirnoff, mm -hmm. and you were all over the place. They had to carry you home. The next day you try, consistently, it gets to a point, the body now is used to that one, one, one bottle. So now you take one and it's like just a sachet of water. It doesn't have any effect on the body. Mm -hmm. So now you need to add an okay. extra. Yeah. You see? Yes. So when it happens like that, then we move on to what we call dependency. Now the body is not dependent on the, on on the, the substance. So now you, are, you need that substance to fully function like you used to be without the substance. Okay. So I don't know. There was one video on the... on the minimum tampi and a Like... Uh, yeah, yeah. Some, some, something that happened in, I think, in the western, region. western part yeah. of it. I, I think minum tampi and minimum andana and a metamie like, what he's trying to say is he's now he's psychologically dependent on the drug, even though he knows the effect of the alcohol, the andana or orphano. But he needs it to function, to be able to do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's what we call the psychological dependency as well. Now you know the effect of the drug. But because of the f pleasure and the nice um, sensation you feel when you take it, like those uh, that perform on the stages. Some people say, I can't perform if I don't take alcohol. Yeah. So now you are dependent on the alcohol to be able to perform. So because of that feeling you have when you take the alcohol and you can stand in front of the crowd, the motivative aspect, the person is going to be dependent. So this person wants to stop alcohol intake, but can't stop because of what we call the, the withdrawal symptoms. Mm. You want to stop your head. You start feeling headache. And I, might, I want to let the viewers know that alcoholism is very, very dangerous. And anyone who is engaging in it should find a way to desist from it or look for the professionals that can help you. 
because it gets to a point you start having alcohol induced hallucinations you start hearing voices you start, you start hearing voices voices people talking to you you start seeing things you start having nightmares you see mm -hmm. and at that point people might think this guy's going crazy it's an alcohol induced hallucination and that is when the body is not intoxicated so much with the alcohol you see so uh, people might you might have enjoy the positive aspect of it but the long-term effect and the short-term effect are very 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 dangerous that individuals need no you don't even need to start it to get to that level mm. yeah and and there's this part of it that i have also noticed when it comes to a lot of especially the young people currently yeah. i don't know if it's a movement or if it's it's a norm that's that's beginning to want to come and stay which for me i am very much against it i see that the alcohol it's not just alcohol now. It's, it's been mixed with several things that gives ecstasy, more like aphrodisiacs, that's making... The tolerance I was talking about, Ken. That is where that comes, yes, right? Yes, because they, they have been taking alcohol, alcohol, or now yeah. they are not feeling what they used to feel when they take the alcohol. So now they have to mix it with something else that will increase that mm. excitement, mm. the excitement that they feel when they used to take the alcohol. So now they have to put things, mix things. Mix no, before things. we came to the studio, I did mention to you that a couple of years ago in school, there, there was a, a group of friends just said, uh, it got me wondering anyway, that Charlie, this alcohol will really take safe. No, you do anything you know, for stopping and start drinking start petrol. Drink. I mean, <laughs> then I asked myself, really? Is that, is that where it's got into? Like, yeah. you want to stop and now drink petrol? Because you need something that's, that can do more than just alcohol, alcohol. isn't it? Sure. Hmm. I, I, I kind of think it's as yeah. dangerous as... I mean, very I agree dangerous. that it's, it's quite dangerous. Very but dangerous. But is it, is it something that's easy to stop? Um, depend on the level the person has gotten to. Mm. You know, when you get to a level where stopping alcohol intake or alcohol use becomes a problem because of the withdrawal symptoms, then you need to seek help for them to take you through the stages. Okay? Because the withdrawal symptoms come so hard that you feel like and then the, the moment you take the alcohol, then you are fine. Mm. So I don't know. I, it's it's common with uh, people who take in cocaine. You see them like this kind of uh, yeah. trembling and all yeah. that, some kind of fidgeting and yeah. uncomfortable kind of behavior. Yes, it comes with alcohol. You see the person feeling severe migraine. Sometimes comes with diarrhea, mm. feeling uncomfortable. But the moment the person takes the alcohol, the person becomes okay because now the body is dependent <coughs> on the drug. So the body needs it. Needs it. Yeah. So you need to take it for the body to function. And now you're not giving the body what it needs. So now the body needs to tell you that I need it. You begin to punish yourself. Then you see. <laughs> anyway, so this is coming from um, Sami uh, Damanka um, from UCC. And then Sami says, well done, Doc. When you take alcohol once in a while, is it good or bad? When you take alcohol once in a while, I think that's quite vague. I mean, yes, in a while, uh, how? What is that while? The while. <laughs> Somebody can take it uh, in the morning today and in the evening tomorrow. It's still and it a, is while. a while. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you have to look at the quantity. Yeah. Uh, he's one of my students, though. <laughs> oh, okay. So you yes. know who is okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So doctor says you need to look at the quantity and then please try and define your while. The while wow. can be morning and evening. You know, we need to know all that. Yeah. However, I will keep telling you. Let us drink responsibly. And it's don't very even important. start something you don't you don't know where it ends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, doctor says don't start something you don't know where it ends, and I agree with him. So this is coming from um, well, exclusive. Well, I don't know, but Doctor Chris, thanks a lot for this wonderful piece on alcoholism. Um, a very special good evening from all PSA Level Four Hundred UCC. Wow. But wait, <laughs> have you noticed Men's Lounge is sponsored by Alumobites? Of course. I mean, Alumo is mild. Eh? Try me. It's very you know, but like I keep saying, <laughs> drink responsibly. That's the most important. And then know your limits. All right. Yeah, no, no. I was, I was, I, I told you somebody called me about this when I posted the, the flyer. Then the person was like, but your sponsoring company is a little bit. I said like, yes. Alcohol use is not alcohol abuse. That was exactly what I said. That, that, well, that was a good answer. But you see, there is also more to it. That is There's it. There is more to it. <laughs> now, the thing about Alomo that I'm very much aware is that Alomo, Alomo is not necessarily... Um, well, yes, there is a little bit of alcohol in there. But the most important thing you should note is that it is medicinal. Okay? It is very medicinal. And it has a lot of health, you know, good stuff when it comes to our health. And that is the reason why 
we warmly and happily embrace Alomo. <laughs> yes. Doc. All right. <laughs> so your answer tags along with mine, isn't it? Yeah. This is your UCC people. They are watching Bao. Uh, anyway. We'll support our so own. one <laughs> other thing that we need to also look at has to do with alcohol use disorder. Okay. You know, and um, what signs and symptoms we, we kind of see on men or whoever, I mean, not necessarily men, but whoever takes in or I mean, over, over does it or abuses it. Okay. okay. Mm. All right. Um, there, is, there is something uh, I would like to share. Yeah, uh, please go ahead. Um, it's with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and also International. Uh, okay. So it gives a long criteria mm -hmm. as to some of the things, a diagnostic criteria. So before you can say somebody is having um, alcohol use disorder, mm -hmm. Uh, three or four of those criteria should be present. Okay, so, and this one is from a DSM-5, the Diagnostic and St uh, Statistical Manual 5. So drinking more or for a long period of time than intended, then feeling incapable of cutting down on the amount of alcohol consumed, then becoming sick of an ex extended period of time as a result of drinking too much, the inability to concentrate due to alcohol craving, inability to care for your family, hold down a job or to perform in school, continue to drink despite problems, then decrease participation in activities which were once important, then finding oneself in dangerous or harmful situations as, directed res as a direct result of drinking, sorry, then drinking more as a result of a tolerance to alcohol, then experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Mm. So they are saying that alcohol use disorders uh, or disorder ranges from mild to severe. If two or three of the symptoms I have uh, read out as present, then the, we would say the person is at a mild stage. Okay. When four to five of the symptoms are present, we would say the person is at a moderate state. But when six or more is present for a particular period of time, after six months, you could see after six months, these things are present, then it means that the person is at a severe stage. And mm. this is the time you need to start seeking help. Okay, and I was, I don't know, I was telling you earlier that there are some people that have alcohol everywhere. One of the signs you need to see in a person who have uh, this disorder is that he always have alcohol hidden around in his office, in his drawer, under his car, boot, everywhere. This person gets angry when you talk about his alcohol behavior. There's a desire to stop, but he can't. Okay, and the person ignore everything that becomes that was previously very important to him. The family, job, whatever, it's no more of importance. He wakes up and the first thing he wants to do is to go to the, um, wherever his alcohol is and sip. We call it the eye opener. So the person will have an eye opener for the day. He starts the day with the, either a glass or a shot of alcohol. So those signs will let you know that the person is actually in that stage. Yeah. Yes. I see. Interesting. So um, I'll take this from... Um, um, a viewer. This is coming from Bernice. So Bernice from Bema Camp. And I, I want to say Alomo Bites is good because it helped me in my in my menses. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm sure this I'll refer to the people from Casa Preco. <laughs> anyway, so there's something new coming up and it's part of the things we are doing to crown our health month, considering the fact that we are in this COVID season. And so one thing I'll tell you, and just listen carefully, the moment you hear fellow Ghanaians, I'm sure you know what that means. So fellow Ghanaians, it's time for mask up challenge. Mm, mask up challenge. You're going to be wearing the mask. So this is what you need to do. Simply share a picture of yourself in your nose mask and tag our social media handles with the hashtag mask up with GMABC. Mask up with GMABC. I'm sure you can see some beautiful images running on your screen. So you... Simply share a picture of yourself in your nose mask and tag our social media handles with the hashtag MaskUpGMABC and stand a chance of winning fantastic prizes from 25th to the 31st of May 2020. Oh, remember that only two lucky people get to win in each day. Terms and conditions apply. This campaign is brought to you by Global Media Alliance Broadcasting Com um, Corporation with support from Bell Aqua Mineral Water, Casman Clothing and Blue Skies Ghana. Limited. So, fellow Guineans, we want to see the mask. Isn't it, Doc? Doc, you didn't show up with your mask. I have it. 
You have it here. I came with my max. Oh, I see. <laughs> I guess we are about a meter apart, so we are fine, isn't we it? We are fine. All right. So, coming back to our discussion, before we proceed, I'll take this one also from one of our viewers, and this is coming from. Oh. This technology will kill us. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. So it's from Uncle Lucas. And Uncle Lucas says, I want to ask Doc if he had tasted alcohol before and what is his take on alcohol mixed with sugar? Example, Irish cream, etc. He has, I've tasted alcohol before. So first yeah. part of the question answered. Yes, you have. Yeah. And what is your take on, on alcohol mixed with sugar? Example, Irish cream etc um as an it effect you know there was once i went for um, was it was it, that was my graduation i think mm. and a friend of mine we had a party and then there was some kind of punch that was mixed and it has a lot of fruits mixed with it so you just taste very deceptive eh? sweet uh -huh. you know that night i have to walk home with my shoes <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure if people were allowed to share their alcoholic experiences, we, we won't leave Seriously. here today. <laughs> and they have to be laughing at me. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't really get what. Uh, is it talking about its effects? Anything that has alcohol, mm -hmm. anything that has some percentage of alcohol, we are talking about the alcohol. Yeah. In quote here. So anything that has alcohol, um, in it, depending on it. The, the intensity, the amount of the, the percentage of yeah. the alcohol, each effect still remains the same, irrespective mm. of how it is done. Because I remember I took that alcohol without knowing it was alcohol, but the effect was great on me. Mm. Like, I drank a lot because it was sweet, sugar, everything. But at the end, the effect of alcohol was still experienced. Mm. So irrespective of whatever is mixed with the alcohol, the content, so long as there's some level of alcohol in it, the question is how much or the percentage in there and how moderate are you taking it yeah, and yeah. its effect. So in the end, it all comes back to the limits. The, the percentage what your of limits alcohol. and then what you yeah. can take. Well, so I'm going to go on our next um, break and then uh, when we are back, the phone lines will be open. I'll announce the phone line when we are back and then you can start calling. However, keep your text messages coming through and then we'll read them and then go on our social media pages and then add your contributions to this chat. Please stay tuned. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, so welcome back. If you're just joining us, uh, it's still ETV Ghana. We're on the men's lounge, and we are discussing alcohol abuse. And uh, like I said, this is the time that the phone line is open. I'll announce the line. And uh, the phone number is 0555 Get your calls coming through. We'll speak with you. So this is coming from Kuku Ampia. And Kuku says, most of these alcoholic beverages on our market now have aphrodisiacs in them which enhances sexual intercourse how dangerous can that be to the reproductive system okay um i think when we start touching on the the, the effects. effects then we should just go straight into the effects then okay aqua has a, a short and long-term effect on uh, the individual that engages in it mm. some of these short-term effects can be alcohol poisoning that is characterized by vomiting, nausea, and all that. Some can be coma. You take too much of alcohol, then you go, boom, out. You black out. Mm -hmm. can lead to a seizure. The person can just faint and, and all that. Doc, let me, let me just hold you on a little bit. There's a caller on the line. Edward, good evening. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Bema Camp. Hi, let's hear you, sir. Yeah, I want to ask Doc. Uh, when you take alcohol and you are intoxicated how long does it take to leave your system edward can can you come again and kindly speak up a little bit more i want to i want to ask doc yeah uh when you take alcohol and you are intoxicated how long does the alcohol leave your system i want to know the duration all right thank you very much sir 
Doc. You're welcome. When yeah. you take alcohol and you are intoxicated, how long or about how long does it take to leave your system? You know, it takes the liver one hour to take uh, to detoxify or to release one bottle of beer from the system. And a bottle of beer have about five point something percent of alcohol, depending on the the brand. So it depends on the quantity. And that's why when it overwhelms the liver, that's why that's where the the walls of the liver becomes very weak and the liver cancer sets in. So if you take a bottle of alcohol um, wine, sorry, bottle of beer, yeah. it takes approximately an hour for the liver to get that out of the system. Okay. So looking at the percentage of beer to other alcohol. So the more you take, so after an hour, the liver needs to take a rest. So if you have more in the system, the liver works for an hour and gets tired. So you would be there for after certain minutes before it starts working again. So it will take a longer period when the alcohol level is high. Okay. That's why it's advisable that you take the amount that the liver can easily work on. Work on. Okay. Yes, All right then. So doc, let's come back to the effects. Yeah. So we have uh, three main components, three aspects that alcohol can affect, um, or the three aspects of effect of alcohol. We have uh, the social effect, we have the psychological effect, and the physical effect. So I take the social effect first. Mm -hmm. Socially, alcohol um, makes people engage in certain risk behaviors, like risk driving, engage in some behaviors that um, would, would lead them to engage um, to have problems with the law, okay? Somebody takes alcohol because at that point, the brain is not really functioning as it's supposed to be. So the person might does, uh, must do something uh, that will lead to having problem with the law. Doc, I'm going to have to hold you on it again okay. for another caller. Um, the name, uh, your name and where you're calling from, caller? Uh, my name is calling from Ashima. Can you speak up a little bit, please? My name is John. I'm calling from Ashima. All right, John, let's hear you. Okay, my problem is, I used to take pizza. Hello? Hello, let's hear you, sir. Yeah, I used to take pizza. Sorry, George, and please come again. You used to take in what? We took, like, marijuana stuff. Okay, marijuana substance, okay. Yeah, and then I want to know, uh, I want to know if marijuana and alcohol. I don't know. I don't think. But my brain tells me that uh, there is no alcohol content in marijuana. So I'm thinking. Um, I, I want to ask this: Does the toffee I take will it have any effect? On okay. Okay. So George, um, I think it's the same question somebody also is asking from Dan Suman, and he's asking the combination of alcohol and then marijuana. What is the effect? And for this particular caller, he's saying that he takes the, the I think he's referring to the toffee. There's a toffee yeah, that the they, they take and all that. And so he's he wants to know because he's very much aware that that toffee does not have alcohol. And so what will be the effect for both combination? Okay. So um, that marijuana, so marijuana, <laughs> it leads to the release of um, a neurotransmitter in the system which is called uh, dopamine. So a consistent and then a regular intake of that will lead to excess release of dopamine, which which help you to engage in some kind of pleasure behaviors. So after a period of time, the issue is the body is now going to need it. So continue taking it would have a long-term effect on the brain. Alcohol and other all the substances that are abused by young men, they should be aware that it have effect on the major organs of the body, the brain, the heart, our kidney, the liver. So whether alcohol or, um, how do you call it, weed, they all end up having a long-term effect on the brain. Okay, so he shouldn't think it's not alcohol, so he wouldn't, he's not, he's not seeing it as a problem. <laughs> it has a long-term effect on it. All right, I guess you are answered now. Chris, let's yeah. go on. So the, with the social problems that yeah. I was uh, affected, I was talking about, one, the person might engage in those risky behaviors, the person might neglect or ignore important things like work, job, um, school, might abuse the family because the person gets drunk, come home, the wife says something and then you take a slap yeah. and all that. So the family, you might lose a, a loved one, like your relationship will not be stable. 
because it will, it will lead to the lady arguing all the time about and then so and then so now let's look at the physiological aspect um, physically alcohol has a lot of effects on our physiological aspect of the, of the, of the human system mm. so one your heart too much of alcohol intake can lead to what we call myoc myocardiac infection, which is heart attack. You can die out of it. It can either increase your heart pressure or decrease the heart pressure, okay? And would lead to the weakening of the, the heart muscles, which can lead to stroke, okay? Then it has effect on the bone. It, it shrinks the bone. We call it osteoporosis. So it makes the bone become very tiny. So little thing can just break the bones, okay? Then, um, the reproductive health, the reproductive organ. It reduces the testosterone level in the body. So your desire for sex is gone. So most people who are more addicted or more into alcoholism have problem with sex at a long term. They grow up and then you can see that uh, they're having marital problem, their sexual functioning is not as it used to be. As a result of this excessive intake of these aphrodisiacs. So now you've made the body now get used to push me to work. You get it. And it gets to a point now you need to take more. But the alcohol won't you let, uh, let you function the way you want to function. So it might weaken your, your productive system and, and that. Then the psychological aspect is one of the things that is very, very complicated. One, there could be memory lost. Because alcohol induced uh, dementia. Lost of memory. You, you, you can remember some of the things that you know. Um, uh, there will be lack of concentration, lead to depression, and then suicidal ideations might also start setting in. You get it. And then, uh, you know, immediately you take alcohol, it goes through the brain blood barrier into your brain, and it has to have, that's why immediately you start, you start feeling movement problem. The hind brain, the part of the brain that controls movement, is already affected. Then, after a few minutes, your frontal lobe or your, yeah, your, the frontal aspect of your brain is also now being affected. Okay, so you can see that now your judgment is becoming poor, your vision is becoming poor, like everything. Somebody will tell you something, and you, what did you say? Like this kind of a thing. I don't know if you know. <laughs> so, those are all long term effects of alcohol. And I would say that even though some people think they've taken alcohol for so many years and they're still okay, nothing has shown yet, don't think that you are safe. Okay, because some things also take a long time to develop. Okay. And sometimes when it comes, it just comes abruptly, boom. And before you can seek help, it's very dangerous. Yeah. You are already gone. Yeah. So mm -hmm. those are some of the effects that uh, a person might, might feel or face during uh, alcohol use problems or... Look, what, what about the, 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 you know, people, people take alcohol and... Um, Obviously, sometimes for the sake of certain emotions that that they, 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 they face. Now, beyond that, does this alcohol intake, obviously the abuse of the alcohol, yeah. does it have any emotional effect on any person? For example, you, you take in so much, you get intoxicated, and then let's just say after some hours, you, you, you almost back. Does it have any effect on your emotions? Yeah, alcohol, alcohol have... Um Effect on emotions. You know, the moment you take alcohol, the brain is the, the mastermind of the whole body. So anything that affects the brain affects the whole system. Mm. So now your judgment has been impaired by the intake of alcohol. So now you can't really make direct or clear judgments about even what you're feeling. So your emotions, your feelings, your everything is being inter interrupted based on the introduction of the substance that you, you just took. So some people take alcohol, they are so depressed that they take alcohol to excite them a little. Mm. So they take in alcohol so that they can start doing some of the things they feel like doing. But that doesn't mean that Hello? the emotional switch just happened because of the alcohol. It might Hello? be like immediately the alcohol is out of the system. Doc, I'm okay. going to take my last caller. Okay. Good evening, caller. Your name and where you are calling from? Uh, please, I'm Emmanuel from Bema Camp. Emmanuel yeah. again from Bema Camp. Let's hear you. Yeah, please. I wanted to know. The, I've heard that alcohol, when you are taking, you are, you at some point in time you feel, have some 
like when you're doing some exercise you see your body shaking and all that, that kind of stuff okay i don't know whether it i want him to give me more clarity on that okay okay yeah all right thank you emmanuel so doc Emmanuel is asking that you know when it comes to the take intake of alcohol you know it gets to a point where you you, you kind of begin to shake you kind of begin to shake, okay? And I don't know whether it's part of the effect. You know, people have that, they can't even hold know. a glass and yeah. all that. And he wants to know how, perhaps how true that is. And perhaps if there are any levels of that alcoholism or the alcohol abuse that gets you there. I'm sure that is what Emmanuel is trying yeah. to ascertain. Like, like I was saying earlier that um, alcohol has effect on your movement and maintaining your balance. So immediately that aspect of you, um, that part of the brain is being influenced movement balancing becomes a problem mm. okay so some people have some level of uh, uh, trembling and shaking of the hands or even the body but most of the time this comes in as a result of the withdrawal symptoms it's one of the withdrawal symptoms so either you have deprived the body of alcohol for some time then you start feeling those things to tell you that the body needs it okay uh -huh. but i have i'm yet to see somebody who is taking in alcohol and in the process he so unless maybe the person is an alcoholic and having taken alcohol and is experiencing that fine, which I have seen a couple of times, but the person taking the alcohol and in the process and there's that kind of tremor, I have not witnessed. Okay, Chris, I'm going to have to be taking your very last words, but following up on what you just said, yeah. so when the body is asking for it, should you give in? Okay. Okay. Uh, the healing process starts with a decision from the individual. Okay. Let me take it from there. For, for, for you to be able to help someone who is having a problem with uh, alcohol use or alcohol abuse, the person himself needs to make a decision. According to the Clemente and Prochaska in 2007, they say that they f first start from the individual. The desire to, s to change that behavior should be there. When there is a desire, then now you seek, expect advice and help. Okay. Trying to stop alcohol intake is not easy because now the body is already used to it, so you need it. But there are some helps that comes with the professionals. There are some um, medications, psycho, um, psycho medications that we can give. There are some medications that would help you to reduce the craving, okay? And there are some stages of behavior modifications that will be done. That's why the rehabilitation centers are available, teach you, teach you skills that will help you to overcome the the craving and then the desire okay, okay. yeah all right so on these notes i'm going to draw the curtains uh, to a close now and uh, we're going to have to leave and then we'll be back next week with another exciting episode thank you very much uh, chris for being part of our program and thank you for, thank you also to casa prego alomo Beaters for being our sponsor we are glad to have you and let me remind you drink responsibly know your limits and don't just joke with alcohol. It can be a menace in the future. See you next week.